In this video, I'm going to share my thoughts about this X arm robot arm, and I'm going to show you how to create a TK intergui that can control and move all the different joints of this robot arm. Before we get started on creating the actual GUI, I just wanted to share my initial thoughts with this robot arm, especially what I liked and what I did not like about it. If you're not interested in this, feel free to skip ahead. The timestamps are in the description. So first, the things that I like. It's a very relatively low cost robot arm. It's $200 and it is, seems very sturdy for $200. All of these blue brackets that you see are actually metal aluminum. So it's lightweight, but it feels very sturdy. It's not plastic. The second thing is these motors. The motors are nicer motors than your typical hobby servo. You get a lot of positional feedback. You can query them. They're addressable. They are similar to the Dynamixel 12A servo motor. However, you just don't have as much control over them. So they're called an LX15D motor, and I can't find much information on this motor. This is a great kit if you have someone who's just getting into robotics or a little kid who is expressing interest in robotics. There's a lot of different ways to control this robot arm. The first way is you can get your phone and you can get an app on your phone. Uh, second way is you can get this controller. And with this controller, if you sync by pressing start and select, the different joysticks and the different buttons uh, move the different servo motors. And with this Windows GUI, you can control all of these servos individually. And it's very responsive, which is nice. I just need to hold on to it because I had to unclamp this. Now, one of the bad things about this robot is I don't like these suction cups that come with it. Normally, I use this bracket. Uh, for the video, I had to take the bracket off. But with these suction cups, it's really... I can't get them to actually stick onto any surface. You can... It's not the greatest surface right now, but I couldn't get them to stick on any of these surfaces. So the problem is when you have these type of swings like this, you can actually cause your robot to tip over if you are not secured to the workspace. So I always use a, a clamp. That's one issue. The second issue I don't like about this robot, it seems like the motors are proprietary. So they're made by High Wonder and there's not that much information on them. Now, I was able to find a GitHub repository that was able to make sense of some of this in giving credit to C. Corson who created this arm servo controller. The first thing we want to do is uh, when, when you look at this arm servo controller and we go to the Python directory, you can install this on Linux, Macs, or Raspberry Pi, as well as Windows. So you want to make sure that all of these different requirements are satisfied. And to satisfy them, you're going to want to put them into uh, pip. So from your command prompt, you can just do pip install um, upgrade setup tools. And mine is already at the newest version. Then you just run down the line pip install HDI API. HID, HID API. And then you can go pip install XARM. And then to make sure that this is working, you can copy this code, try to run it in your Python editor. And if you get the battery volts, then you know that you have successfully installed this XARM requirement. Now let's write the code for the main GUI. The first thing I want to do is I want to import TK enter as TK and I want to import XARM. Now, when I create these TK enter GUIs, I create them as classes. So I'm gonna create a class that's GUI. And this is going to have an init function, which takes an argument of self because it's in a class. And this init function is going to make the connection to the robot and set up all of my GUI elements. So this is gonna get a little tedious to program because we're gonna be copying the same code over and over and over again. 
Uh, but before I forget, let's make sure we get into this class. So if double underscore name double underscore is equal to double underscore main double underscore, then we're going to say my GUI is GUI. And this points to the class that I just created, and it will call this init function. So now in this init function, what I want to do is make a connection to the robot. I want this to, I want to be able to use this robot when it makes the connection. And so I want a function to return the object of the robot. So this is going to be self.connect to robot. And self means I want this inside the class. So I'm going to have another function that's def um, connect to robot. It's inside the class, so it needs self. And then I want to try to make this connection. So I want to say try to make this xarm connection. So I want to say xarm is equal to, well, let's just call it arm, is equal to xarm.controller USB. And then if this is true, I want to return arm. If this isn't true, I want to go into the accept. And I want to say just, okay, problem connecting to robot check connections. And I want to return none. So this is always going to return something. Hopefully it returns the arm. If we have a problem, we're going to return none. So we have to check that problem. So self.robot, um, if self.robot is none, now we have a problem. We're going to print exiting program and we're going to exit. So now if I'm connected, this should run and let's print out self.robot. So except needs these double arm, uh, this colon. So if I'm connected, I do print out my robot arm. If I unconnect this, and I run it. I say there's a problem connecting to the, ro to the robot, check connections, it exits. I plug it back in. I can make that connection again. So my connection is good. Now let's draw the, or create the actual main GUI. So I'll say self dot main window is equal to TK dot TK. And now I'm going to say self dot main window dot geometry and this is going to be 400 by 400 and then let's just make sure this is working tk main loop so now i get my tk window what i want to do in this window is i want to have two columns the first column i want to have all the labels the second column i want to have all the scales and the scale is the slide bars now this is where it gets a little tedious. Let's create the labels first. So my labels, I want a bunch of different labels that say what the slide bar, that correspond to the slide bar. So I'm gonna say self.label gripper, self.label blink one, and now I can just copy this, two, three, four, five, six. Actually, link one, shouldn't be there. Link one is the gripper. So I have two, three, four, five, six. Now all of these are going to be a TK label. They go to self.main window. And then the actual text is gripper. Now this can get copied. And all I need to change on all of this is what this is. So this is going to be link two link three, link four, link five, link six. So now I have all my labels and let's just, let's place them now so we just do everything at once. So I'll have self.label gripper.place, x is equal to, we'll say 10, y is equal to 10. And now if you were doing pack or a grid, it'd be uh, different commands here. And then I'll have self dot two, then 
trying to think of the most efficient way to copy all this. And then these are all going to have dot place. X is equal to, we'll add 50 to, uh, well, they're going to have the same X and we'll add 50 to Y. So Y will be equal to 60. So then Y will be 110, Y will be 160, Y will be 210, and Y will be 260. So now if I run this, I have all my labels on my GUI. Now let's add the, the uh, slide bars. On TK Enter, slide bars are called scales. So what we have is I'm going to do the same thing, self dot uh, scale, and I'm going to have a gripper. Then I'm going to have self dot scale link two, three, four, five, six. Now this is going to get a little bit messier because I'm going to need more than what I can fit on the screen. So I'll have TK dot uh, scale it where does it go it goes on my main window self dot main window and the the scale is going to go from so a from underscore is equal to zero and two is going to be 1000 what this is saying is the scale is allowed to uh, if I move it go from zero to 1000 that's a specification of the robot arm I want a couple more things so here, I'll put it under. I want the orientation of the scale. By default, it goes vertical. So I want orient is going to be TK dot horizontal. And I want the actual command that will be called when I move it to be self dot send val. And I'm going to have to write this and we'll write this as soon as we finish the slide bars. So the trick is that what I'm going to use is all of my scales are going to use the same everything. So all of these can just copy this. They can use the same oops, command if I spelt it right. They can use the same command because I'm assuming I cannot move two slide bars at once. My mouse can only move one slide bar at once. So I can write all of sending this value to the robot in one function. And actually, let's write that function now. I need to go outside of this main loop. So make sure you don't start defining your function in that main loop. And if we define this function and I called it send val, it takes self and the send val what I need to do is grab all my values so my gripper val then link uh, one or two val three four five six and to grab this I'm going to say self dot scale uh, gripper dot get and then we'll have this is equal self dot scale link to dot get three four five six so we just have to change these and then we're actually going to set the position of the robot so we'll say self dot robot so if that is the robot object so self dot robot dot set position and the position this first argument is the servo motor of the robot I want to send this to so this robot arm is a bit strange uh, normally the robot arms I've worked with before uh, you have one down here at the base and you have the gripper is six but here the gripper is one then this rotation is two, this is three, this is four, this is five, and the uh, base rotation is six. So I want to set one. 
And the value is going to be this gripper val. And I want to give it an argument of wait is equal to false. So it doesn't wait a timeout before it sends the next command. Then I want to copy this. And this becomes two, three, four, five, six. And these values here become two, three, four, five, six. And that's all I need to do. Uh, I just actually need to, uh, what do I need to do? I need to actually place these, place these scales. And I think that should be it. So now let's place these scales. So I have self.scale gripper dot place. X is going to be equal to 100. Y is going to be equal to zero. It's a little thicker than a label, so we'll give it some buffer. And then I want to let's do self dot scale link to dot place. X is 100. Y is okay. So Y is going to be well offset if I 50. And now four, five, six, three, four, five, six. And we just keep offsetting this by 50, 100. 150, 200, 250. So if we look at what we did, we made a connection to a robot. We created all, all of our labels. We created all our slide bars and then we placed them. There's actually one more thing I want to do. On my scales, I initially want to set, uh, set the values. So the gripper doesn't matter as much, but I'll, I'll do it anyway. Scale, gripper dot set we want to set them all to 500 so we want to set them when the robot arm runs it's in this upright position which is a, a good position good position for it to be in self dot link to dot set 500 three four five six three four five six so now if i run it let's see how many errors i get uh scale Link two. Oh no. Uh, send value takes. Um, so this needs a EVT. It needs the event. Okay. So, so now this runs. Okay. If I move it, you can see the gripper start to follow. If I choose link two can be more aggressive with the rotation ones. But when I hold, I'm gonna hold the robot since it's not on the, it's not clamped. Okay. So all my slide bars work, this robot might fall. But the other thing I wanna test is when I restart the program, does it go to 500? So let me restart and it does. So all of my links reset. So now I have a basic GUI that I can use to send commands to this robot arm. Now this can be extended. You can, and I'm going to try to extend it to have some inverse kinematics and uh, using these commands, be able to have a camera above this robot and uh, do some type of projects with it.